Welcome back. I wanted to dive in today and discuss an algorithmic real world approach to treating neuropathic pain. This is one of the commonest pains we treat. It's one of the most complex pains we treat. And we need to use expertise, experience, and a little bit of something extra to apply all the research to the person sitting in front of me struggling with pain. Sometimes it's easy to do, sometimes it's not easy to do because no two people are the same. Your pain is your fingerprint, your pain is unique. How do I apply research that is focused on 50 year olds with diabetic neuropathy and using amitriptyline? How do I apply that research to a 35 year old sitting in front of me? with difficulty. How do I take research out there that is specific and targeted, sometimes good, sometimes not, and apply it to the person sitting in front of me? Here is a paper that shows us a, an, an algorithmic approach to treat neuropathic pain. It's taken another, uh, a number of other studies and combined it. And I think it's quite a good paper. So let's dive in and have a look at it. We know that neuropathic pain is prevalent. We know it is debilitating. We know there are many causes of neuropathic pain. Have a look at some of the other, other videos. We've talked about causes, we've talked about diagnosis, we've talked about medications. Let's talk about putting it all together, combining with an interventional approach to treating neuropathic pain. You've got to be good at diagnosing neuropathic pain. You've got to think about neuropathic pain before you do anything. And how many times do I see through the week people coming in and they have not had their neuropathic pain diagnosed? It's been months, sometimes years, and they've been struggling and no one has been able to diagnose their neuropathic pain. It happens way too often. That's why this channel exists. That's why we're here educating people. Please like, subscribe, share with us your pain journey in the comments below. Ask questions. Let's raise awareness. I'm sick and tired of seeing people suffer and struggle with pain. We've got to do something about it. Let's dive in. Here is the algorithm. Let's go through each step in turn. Diagnose neuropathic pain. You've got to make that assessment. You've got to start off treatments. So you've got to have that knowledge to diagnose and treat it. And if your GP is unable to do so, if your medical specialist is unable to do so, do it yourself. Have a look at the diagnostic video on neuropathic pain. See if you've got neuropathic pain. Ask questions. Let's work it out together. Let's work out a bit of a plan of action. And of course, yes, this is not medical advice. This is educational content. Step one, use the medications available. We have a number of medications available to treat neuropathic pain. Tricyclic antidepressants, serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors, the gabapentinoids, and topical medications that you can apply topically. You will probably already know that I enjoy using gabapentin. I don't enjoy using gabapentin. I prefer using gabapentin as one of the antineuropathics because it's got a lowish number needed to treat and a highish number needed to harm. And that definition has been discussed elsewhere. Use these medications if they are not helpful in you, uh, when you're using them alone. The second step is to combine these medications and we combine these medications a lot. Again, the person sitting in front of me needs to have this applied to them, not from what the research has said. Still on step two, sometimes tramadol can be useful uh, as a very weak non-opioid opioid. We'll discuss tramadol at another point as well. Let me know your thoughts. If step two, combination antineuropathics and consideration for tramadol is not helpful, then this algorithm recommends getting, getting you to a specialist center, a pain specialist center, pain specialist network. Um, Clearly, we are a pain specialist center and network, and we sometimes see people way at the beginning of the neuropathic pain journey, not after they've tried a couple of treatments. So step three, if you're not winning on first steps, single medications, combination medications with tramadol, get them to a specialist center or get to a specialist center. And a specialist center is gonna consider other medications, 
and or interventional therapies. And we've mentioned interventional therapies and over time we'll elaborate on interventional therapies. But just a reminder, some of the interventions that may be appropriate depending on the person sitting in front of me because neuropathic pain is so complicated and so varied include nerve blocks, sympathetic plexus blocks, neurolytic blocks with alcohol or phenol, adhesiolysis where we sometimes break up scar tissue around nerves, radiofrequency ablation which can be divided into radiofrequency neurotomy where we damage, destroy, burn, cauterize nerves, or pulsed radiofrequency ablation where we don't. We use an alternating current or current that's on and off so the needle doesn't get hot, it doesn't damage the nerves but it can suppress nerve function and pain. Other medications might include infusions of ketamine, infusions of lignocaine. So there are many interventional approaches that can be applied to the person sitting in front of you, or in front of me, should I say. One of the things that is so difficult is I can't tell you now what treatments I should be using for X pain because it's different for every person sitting in front of me. What I can do is if you share with me, for example, a pain diagnosis, I can share with you a possible treatment algorithmic approach, which we might do at another point as well. So that is step three, medications, interventional approaches. Then step four is what we call neuromodulation, targeted therapeutic delivery, not scattergun delivery like medications might be, not scattergun delivery like rehabilitation techniques might be. We know that rehabilitation, physical therapy, psychological therapy is safe. We know that it can be effective. But even so, studies that have been done don't follow patients up for more than three months. So we know that some of these effects of rehabilitation fizzle out over time. It needs to be ongoing. I've seen many people that have had rehabilitation, it hasn't helped or it hasn't provided lasting effects. So neuromodulation, not scattergun, targeted treatments, targeted to a nerve, peripheral neuromodulation, targeted to a group of nerves, the back of the spinal cord, spinal cord stimulation, and even, tar and even targeted drug delivery, which is not step four, that's neuromodulation, where we are at the moment. And the aim of neuromodulation is to use it where people's pain is neuropathic, where people's pain is refractory, it's not responding to treatments, where people are what we call psychologically sound. There are no other serious factors at play, incredibly high levels of distress, litigation, various other factors. So we need to make that assessment and sometimes screen people appropriately for neuromodulation. And the thing about neuromodulation is we're not looking for a small amount of pain control. We're looking for a substantial, significant amount of pain control because there are risks with neuromodulation. There are more risks with neuromodulation than rehabilitation strategies. So we want a profound amount of pain control, 50% or more. And nowadays we're looking for 60, 70, 90% pain control before we consider neuromodulation as a treatment. If neuromodulation fails because sometimes pain is like that, then step five might include consideration for low dose opioid therapy. And there are many things we can talk about in terms of opioids. We'll get to opioids. There are some lectures for GPs on opioids down below, so have a look at them. Ask questions about these medications so we can work out videos to provide you with answers. Step six, if all this fails, and we can use a targeted drug delivery. This is where we use things like morphine pumps, local anesthetic pumps, where we apply the therapy directly to the spinal cord space, the CSF, this, the cerebrospinal fluid, through a catheter. The catheter is connected to a, uh, we call it a little drum. Uh, the drum is filled with medications. We control the delivery of medications into the spinal fluid. Uh, targeted drug delivery step six not without its risks but absolutely can be life-changing if used for the correct person for the correct pain so what I've shown you is a real life approach I've gone through six steps in treating neuropathic pain there is no treatment that is appropriate for 
every single person that walks through the clinic door. You've got to apply it to the person sitting in front of you. Remember, all along the way, I've said this before using our clinic stepped uh, algorithmic approach, empower, educate, provide hope. That is such an important factor. Um, and combine that with physical therapies, combine that with rehabilitation therapies, combine that with sleep hygiene, combine that with uh, uh, mood management, combine that with relationship management. It doesn't matter what you combine it with as long as you're looking at the person holistically. Diet management, diet improvement, there are so many factors at play.